Every currency is losing in relation to real goods, stuff, things. But when compared to each other, we can make arguments about which currency is stronger than the other. The euro is currently rotting along with the eurozone. Austerity is simply making things worse. The technocratic elite have been rather quiet since the turmoil of the European sovereign debt crisis. But have faith. They are quietly scheming for their next opportunity. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today I want to talk about various topics, including Greece. A lot to cover today. Let's begin with this. The EU and other trading partners have begun laying the groundwork for a legal challenge to a U.S. border tax proposal in a move that could trigger the biggest case in world trade organization history. This is all related to what Donald Trump has been doing so far. The world is generally opposed to his policies, perhaps challenging globalism. The ultimate goal is to have global governance. We've seen everybody from Gordon Brown and Bushes and everybody talk about having global governance. And there's a challenge to that when you try to get out of NAFTA, when you're trying to get out of you know, the TPP and everything else, you're shaking it up. And that's exactly what's happening right now. The preliminary moves come as Republicans in Congress are working to convince Trump to back a major shakeup of the U.S. corporate tax system that would include a new border adjustment system. It would see U.S. imports subject to tax and export revenues exempted. So you know what's happening right here. They are trying to put America first, and I could definitely agree with that in principle. And uh, we'll see, though, how it all happens. This right here, let's go. Professor Ted Malak revealed that senior Greek economists have inquired about the possibility, now remember I said possibility, of adopting the greenback if the country crashes out of the single currency. Now it was a few years ago where it was claimed that they started printing the drachma again as a backup. That was a claim. We never really saw that taking off. But ultimately, the European sovereign debt crisis was about to literally collapse the EU. And they were able to, let's say, kick the can down the road. He asserted that Athens is so desperate, it is prepared to tie itself to the dollar on the same terms as the likes of Puerto Rico, if it means being able to quit the Eurozone. So they're in dire straits right now. They are at the precipice of what could be a deep collapse for Greece. As a result, this could have a domino effect that takes down all of the Eurozone. That's not going to happen. They are going to take measures to do that. The question is, will have forcing Greece to exit be part of that. I don't know. They obviously want to expand the Eurozone rather than uh, kick members out if they can't afford to stay in. So I don't know how that will react. But this is one option. And the reason why I found this interesting is coming up here. So he basically said that German leaders, including Angela Merkel, were freaked out at the humiliating possibility of losing Greece to a rival currency, which would be a devastating blow to the EU project, obviously. This is it right here. When you see tying Greece temporarily, trust that it would be, hopefully anyway, it would be a temporarily, to the US dollar would be one way for the authorities in Athens to ensure that its currency does not completely tank if it leaves the eurozone as would be likely to occur with a reissued drachma 
Okay, that makes sense to me that they would say, look, temporarily we want to exit here. We're just going to start using the US dollar. It's a strong currency. Have faith in us. Don't worry. Everything is fine. And then we are going to, over the next year, two, five years, whatever it might be, we're going to start reprinting the drachma and they're going to sit side by side and you can use both. And that would be something that would, would uh, take place. Perhaps just temporarily the U.S. dollar would be the legal tender, and then it goes on. Anyway, it's a possibility, it's a thought, but it does make sense. If Greece is to leave. All right, now, in connection with that, I wanted to look into this, show you it. Countries that only use a foreign currency. you got to remember, it's not just the U.S. or one of its states using the US dollar. You have other countries as well, from Ecuador to Turks and Caicos, British Virgin Islands, and, and a bunch of others. Then you have the other uh, countries around the world that use it as legal tender, and that would be like Panama, for example. So this is something that shows you that you don't have to be necessarily owned and operated by the U.S. It could just be another country. They can adopt that. If it makes sense for them, they can adopt it. So I don't know if that's the case for Greece at all. It's a strong currency in, uh, in a weak country. I don't know if they're compatible. But it's just to give the markets a signal of strength. That's basically what it is. And a lot of this is uh, you know, a test. Put it out in the media, see how people react to it. And then uh, you can address it like that. I thought it was interesting. I wanted to bring it to you. Now, when you have trillions, over a trillion dollars, taxes set record through January, still running, of course, no matter what, still running a deficit of 157 billion, with a B, billion dollars. The system is designed to continuously consume more and more debt. And here we are with another example. No matter how much money they bring in taxes, the deficits will always increase. Now, that could change in the near future, but the policies that are currently in place are done so in order to increase poverty. That is the whole point. When people are poor, they're dependent on their government, they won't rise up, they won't stand up, and they will be forced to be on their knees. When you fight from the knees, you're always sort of at that, pun intended, deficit. All right. This is a little interesting. Check it out. Frisco ISD students may not be cleaning just their bedrooms they may be sprucing up their classrooms too. That's one of several suggestions from volunteers trying to help the nearly 60,000 student school district deal with a budget shortfall brought on by a loss of state funding combined with voters' rejection of a tax rate hike. People don't want to pay more taxes, okay? So what do you do? You cut back. Instead of increasing prosperity, instead of figuring out a way to bring more money in or to reduce expenses in a proper way, instead what's happening here is they actually do something like this, filling in this budget shortfall by making students clean up, doing jobs that are generally not supposed to be their own. And this always, it always upsets me to see money being squandered. When you look at this, connected in with that, this happens to be part of the Federal Fumbles 2016. So if you go to a search engine and type in Federal Fumbles 2016, you'll get this report. Don't text and chew, it says. Look at this. It's just a little joke on the side. They're saying, hey, just a friendly reminder not to chew tobacco. Look at this. Last year, federal fumbles highlighted a $2.6 million program to send motivational weight loss text messages to truck drivers. You're going to spend $2.6 million to tell people, truck drivers specifically, to lose weight. Then you have this. 
the NIH, the National Institute of Health, provided nearly $500,000 so far for a program to send text messages to discourage chewing tobacco. This is when you know you have a very serious problem of money being squandered. How about instead of sending these messages, you give that money to that school so the kids don't have to clean up around the classrooms? Makes a little bit more sense anyway. I'm sure there's better ways to save money, but that's just one little example. Then you have this. Japan, who is printing and printing for decades. They're leading the pack in how much money is being printed. They're making the Federal Reserve look like a joke in this race to the bottom. Japan's economy expanded just 1%, even with all the fake numbers, even with all the lies that they're telling us. The economy expanded at just 1% in 2016 as a bump in exports and capital investment offset weak spending at home. Think about it for a second. We've been covering here on the channel, you've seen it, we've talked about it, that they've been doing so horribly that money is fleeing the country that the only one investing is the central bank. And yet, yet, we still see this garbage all the time talking about an increase in investment. Look, if the central bank is the only investor, you can't use that information and make it seem like everything is fine. What a joke. R truly, truly, what a joke. There's more in the article. I'm not going to cover it. Let's move on. CIA director. What a kiss ass. Part of my language. The air to Saudi Arabia's throne has been awarded a medal by the new director of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. Okay? The CIA just gave a medal to Saudi Arabia's heir. That's just saying, look, we want to keep doing business. Here's a medal. They probably threw a party for the guy and everything is just fine. Mike Pompeo, on his first overseas tour since uh, being confirmed as a spy agency chief, made a presentation to the crown prince at a weekend ceremony. And, you know, they're talking about, out of all, out of all things, I mean, this is when you know that the media is completely complicit in all of the lies. Widely respected in the West for his efforts. This, I'm going to read this. I'm going to try to keep a straight face. Okay. Widely respected in the West for his efforts to combat violent extremism. He oversaw a crackdown. <laughs> I can't believe this is trying to be real. Anyway, a crackdown on Al-Qaeda, which killed security officers and foreigners in the kingdom between 2003 and 2007. All right. That's just such a joke. Anyway, I mean, probably the country which has been responsible for the most expansion, if you want to blame it on a country, I don't really think you should point fingers at the countries, it's more of the globalists. But I mean, you know, let's take it at face value. I mean, the most responsible, and you're given an award. It's just like uh, Barry Obama given the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, what a joke. 26,000 bombs dropped last year alone. How many hours an American has to work to buy the S&P? This is really interesting. This is a good one. So ultimately, a few years ago, as we look here, now this right here is uh, year 2000, okay? So you can see that we are basically back at that point. The dot-com boom was an exhilarating ride. I mean, the way up here on that scale, obvious, very obvious bubble. Anybody should have realized that. Then you had a, a low at this point during the financial crisis where I believe that it should be seen as more of an average. That's where it should be at. So the average 
America now, it's cut off on the side here, but about 100 hours to buy the S&P. I like these type of charts here. These, these are uh, very interesting to see when you compare, not necessarily the S&P as a numerical value, but you compare it to something else, and this happens to be one. How many hours the American has to work to buy the S&P? So you take its current uh, numerical value, compare that to the hours, and it's approximately 100. We haven't seen that since the dot-com boom, and what happened after that boom? Oh, need I remind you? Down, down, down. All right. Last one. Sent and their customers will be able to make payments with their voice by talking into their smartphone app. In another sign of the technology, uh, technological revolution that is transforming the banking industry. You walk into the bank. You most of the time you just go to the bank machine. If you need to speak to a teller these days, you're replacing the teller with iPads. You do online banking, and you may interact with you know different types of automation and robotics. In this case, happens to be a smartphone app. Jobs are being replaced, and it is something to uh, really take in. You know, Tesla, the uh, the big dog, Elon Musk said essentially, look, one of the big bulk of jobs out there is driving whether that's uh, transportation of you know food or products or you have uh, you know freight shipping you have taxi drivers everything all of that is going to be replaced by driverless cars at some point or driverless you know automation anyway that's what he's saying and he basically said that a lot of people are going to lose their jobs as a result and we need to quickly find jobs for these individuals because the technology is advancing so fast, the changeover is going to be abrupt. A lot of people are going to be hurt. You're going to have a higher unemployment. So as a result, we got to get a move on, on finding new jobs. That's what they said. That's what I believe. And I do believe it is escalating at a rapid level. All right. So here's a little entertainment for you. You can see Donald Trump and Angela Merkel hanging out on the beach. The paparazzi caught them. And here they are. That's an image for each and every one of you to take to bed. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. So look through the book. Just go over to Amazon. They have this look inside feature that will allow you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.